Ana Maharis Bisen Bash. Ana Maharis Bisen Bash. Bi Henki Rahama Ai Mar Harunai Mezebes. Bi Henki Rahama Ai Mar Harunai Mezebes. Hada. The Chosa have been one of the most elusive things regarding the Metroid series, a proud species known for being highly advanced that have seemingly disappeared into thin air, leaving behind their ruins and technology as the only proofs to their civilization. For the longest time, many of us thought that we might never get the chance to see them, as the games gave the impression that they went extinct some time ago. So who could have expected that when Metroid Dread turned out to be a real thing that we'd finally see the day where they take the center stage in a story and witness Samus reunite with her adoptive kin? Dread didn't just give us a chance to see the Chosos take a major part in its narrative, but also a deeper look into their civilization that allowed us to understand many different aspects of their heritage and history which helped enrich the series as a whole. From all the new details this game gave us, I have to say that my personal favorite is the fact that we finally have a much more developed Chozo language, filled with new symbols, sentences, and even a proper way of speaking it, that builds on top of some of the concepts introduced in previous games, which make it more detailed than what we have seen in the past. While we've had other forms of Chozo writings and vocabulary in previous games, none of them come quite close to feeling as developed as the one we see in Dread since we can find an abundance of proper writings throughout CDR while also having the luxury of hearing three characters speak it in full sentences. That helped us understand a little bit more about how it works and their culture as a whole. In older games, we saw some form of writings and symbols, but after some attempts to decode them, fans quickly found out that they didn't mean much at all and were mostly there to serve as decoration to help enrich the environments. Then with Metroid Other M, the Chozo language was given a proper alphabet, with its symbols correlating to a letter in our Roman-based languages. But with the lack of writings we could use as a point of reference, there wasn't much else we could decipher from it. All of this changed with the release of Metroid Dread, where the alien language was fully fleshed out into something proper and coherent, building on top of what Other M introduced which we see put to use throughout Planet CDR and some of its inhabitants that gave us the missing pieces we needed to properly dissect it. This new depiction of the language has given us far more information and examples that have served as a key in order to decipher it and be able to put it into some practical use. Which is exactly what a group of dedicated fans have set out to do for some months now, pulling their knowledge and research together to create a comprehensive guide with the goal of sharing the results with the world so that we may all have a grasp on the alien language. And so from their extensive work, I felt inspired to make this video to help break down some of their research into something a little bit more digestible for the average fan that can work as a supplementary material to their amazing guide. By no means do I intend to take credit for the hard work these talented group of people have put into the guide or decoding the actual language. I am merely just trying to lend a hand to the project in one of the best ways I know how. But for the sake of this video, I want to keep things surface level, just so that it's easier to understand the main gist of things. So I highly suggest you download the actual guide from the link in the description, just to actually see how deep the research went for this understand more about the proper pronunciations or word structures, and have an overall better explanation about the finer details of their discoveries. Just keep in mind that there may be some subtle changes made in the future, and if you have any suggestions on the matter, I highly recommend you mention it directly to the team behind the Chozo Cypher Club, since they know more about the subject than I do, and I'm sure they would be very interested in running the scope of their research. But before I get into the meat of this video, I have to give a huge shout out to the falling group of people who came together to make this project a reality and for sharing their findings with the rest of us. With all that out of the way, how about we learn the ways we can implement some bird magic into our everyday lives. So I thought that a good way to start is by getting a better understanding of how the Choso dialect is actually written, 
since it was one of the main details I was most interested about and also was one of the bigger things that helped the team understand a little bit more of how the dialect works, which also happens to be one of the simpler things to put into practice. As we see in ZDR's backgrounds, the chosen symbols in this game look overall different to the one we see in something like Metroid Other M at first glance, but the shapes are actually much more similar than what you may think. Instead of being formed into squares like in the previous title, this new writing is instead laid out in the form of equilateral triangles. And if you look at the inner portions of the symbols, you'll notice that they have a pattern that are an identical match to what we see in the older writings, which was of great help in laying out the new alphabet altogether. Fortunately for us, the language is very similar to our common Roman-based ones and their alphabets using the same number of characters from which each correlates to one of our own letters. So for the sake of making things easier to understand, the guide uses a romanization system. So one of the biggest differences between both tongues, besides the way chosen words are structured, comes down to the way you write them. The alien language is able to be written both horizontally, read from left to right, as well as vertically, where it's read from top to bottom. The main catch is that when writing a sentence, every other letter is mirrored vertically, flipped on the x-axis, as if you were using the flip vertical feature found on most softwares out there. So, to show an example of this, let's do a rough transcription of the word Metroid into Chozo, just writing the same name but using the Chozo symbols instead. While normally we transcribe it like this, you may notice that every character is pointing in the same direction which is technically incorrect according to what we see in ZDR's environment. So instead, what we have to do is flip every other letter to create this more symmetrical shape, one that you could almost snugly fit inside the shape of a trapezoid, which as you can see, matches more with what we see in the game. When it comes to writing vertically, we apply the same rule. Every other letter gets flipped and it starts to create these diamond shapes when put together which is what I like to use as a visual guide to know that things are being written out properly. So with this knowledge in hand, in what direction should the first letter of a word be pointing towards? Well, by looking at the writings in Metroid Dread, we can determine that the first letter is usually pointing down, as we see this pattern on the Choso text in the loading screen, the engravings on the mocking mural found in Ferenia, and even on Ravenbeak's robes where it displays the Mocking's methodology. Now, fortunately for us, creating our own custom versions of these writings have been made all the much easier thanks to a font you can find online that helps you flip the characters easily in pretty much any program that was made by my good friend Torvis Bolt. And there's also another font available that does the flipping automatically by Rafitz that you can find online. The trick to flipping the symbols is to make every other character into a capital letter, as the font is designed to make those point downward. So it's as simple as pressing the shift key on every other letter to make sure you're writing things out properly. You can find the link to the font alongside the rest of the guide and other useful things in the description. Just keep in mind that these files may be updated down the line. So now that we know how to write in the alien language, how would one go about reading it out loud? When the team started deciphering some of the writings found on ZDR, one of the things they started to notice is that the words are structured following similar rules to those in the English language. Although it's not a one-to-one -one direct copy from it, as Chozo does have its own ways of making words. However, this is not the same case when speaking the alien tongue, seeing as how Choir Robe and the rest of the characters are using pronunciations that are more associated with Spanish, which is fitting considering that Mercury Steam and the game's voice actors are based in Spain after all. So, a good general rule of thumb to follow is that you write the language as if it were in English but you read and pronounce it as if you were speaking Spanish. Just keep in mind that there may be some words that are shared between Chozo and English, and while they may be written the same, their pronunciation differs, and some of these words may have special meanings in the alien language. 
such as Metroid, which means Ultimate Warrior, but it's pronounced as Mathroids in Chozo. The current PDF guide has an extensive list of pretty much almost any word you may need to form simple sentences, alongside more guidelines to form them properly. Explaining how the different tenses work, a list of how to pronounce most of the letters, and so much more. A big chunk of the vocabulary that the team has been able to decipher comes from figuring out the phonetic patterns of the language when spoken, to determine some of the words to the best of their abilities, since many of them don't have a written form to use as a guide or way to decode their spelling. Hence the reliance on romanization for most of the guide. Like I mentioned earlier, the guide has an abundance of words that have already been decoded which you can use to create almost any custom line that you want, since essentially all you have to do is swap the words from your English sentence for their Chozo equivalent. With the few exceptions being things like possessives and such, which the guide explains in more detail. It's something you can do with other languages out there, but considering that the alien tongue shares a lot of the same grammatical rules found in English, it really lends itself to some straightforward translations. Most of this discovery is owed to a very good friend of mine, Deadweight, who has a huge passion for linguistics as a whole, and it's thanks to his knowledge and dedication that helped the team uncover what they know today by essentially asking, to what extent can we use the language to communicate with each other? If you want to hear more about his rigorous process, then I recommend listening to the Shine Sparkers podcast, where he was invited to discuss his work in more detail. And so, with the knowledge we now have, here are a few examples where we put that research into practice. Anaman Maboris Albert Crocomar sen saki dara hadaris esen mir darha, aranda nino sen ilisus hadaris. Anamanta chela. Ashkar mar bunta tanumar. Nino sen sabek dos sidur na koren, hasar bura. Anamar is be sen bash. Elma sen ilisus bunta. Ana habar dar menke senata, gem nino habar dar menke senana. Now for one final tutorial. What if we wanted to make our voice sound closer to that of the chozos in the game? What could we do in order to achieve that effect? So, first of all, we would obviously need a recording of our own voice. My suggestion when it comes to voicing is to try and keep it towards the lower range and try to add some grunge to your voice while you're at it. This will help get a better result down the line and enhance the overall sound of things. Then, in your editing software, you will want to duplicate this recording twice and place them on separate tracks so you have a total of three. Our first track will be our normal voice, which we won't apply any effects to. This will work as our baseline of sorts, so that our lines can be easily understood after applying some effects. On our second track is where we're going to start applying some of these filters. First of which is a pitch shifter that we're going to take slightly towards the negatives. This will make the voice sound deeper, and as a result, when played out with the original on alter clip, will create a small echo effect that help us match a bit to the sounds the Choso have when they speak. After this, I like to add just the smallest hint of reverb to create a little bit of a distant echo effect that is barely noticeable. This is just to add a bit of decay to our voice and sound a little bit more alien without being too destructive. After applying these effects, we're just going to lower the volume of this track by a few decibels, so it's merely adding to the main one. A rule of thumb to follow is that we want the first track to be the loudest one, so that our lines are always clear and easy to understand. Now for our last track, I simply like to add yet another pitch shifter, but this time to make a higher pitch sound for the audio instead. Just a tiny bit, so it's not too jarring when compared to the original, and then we're also going to lower this track's volume as a whole. 
The goal of this third track is to add a bit of those higher notes that we can hear at times coming from the Chozo when they speak in the game, and help warp our original sound just a little bit more to sort of counterbalance the deeper track we made earlier. And remember that you can still add other effects to this track, like the reverb or parametric equalizer if you like, or if you feel like you need them for achieving a different result. And after all that, here's an example of how the effect may sound when it's all put together. I know it's not 100% exact to how Ravenbeak or Quiet Robe may have sound in the game, since I don't have a similar voice to that of the actors, and I don't know where were the exact filters or effects that were added to the recordings. But this was an approximation I was able to make by just trying to reverse engineer what I heard in the game. If anyone else wants to have a go at it, the cutting room floor has some of the voice files of Ravenbeak's final monologue without the audio filters. So you can use a clean version of Dave Rogers Ruiz's performance as a point of reference. If anyone has any suggestions on how to improve it, feel free to let me know in the comments so that I may leave a note there in the future or even make an update to this part of the tutorial altogether. Another thing the team made related to the subject that I wanted to mention is a simple book titled A Dosh Z, Chozo for A to Z. It's a short story made to resemble one of those picture books you get to teach children about the alphabet, but in regards to learning the alien language. It's yet more lines that can help you practice your pronunciation and reading of the Choso glyphs, which serves as a great example of how to build simple sentences that feature two of my favorite characters from the series in the form of these adorable drawings that I just absolutely adore, made by my great and talented friend Metroid35. And that covers the basics regarding on how to use the Choso language. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this was but a small fraction of what the team was able to uncover and share with their guide. So if you want to have a more thorough understanding of the finer details and rules that they were able to decipher, then I can't recommend enough that you give it a read for yourself. Hopefully, with this new knowledge, you too will be able to incorporate some more Metroid into your daily routine and be able to spread the wisdom and power that comes with mastering the tongue of bird magic. Just make sure you're using it wisely, though. The beauty of this guide is that it does not only help you understand the existing Chozo words we can find in Metroid Dread's environment, or the spoken sentences in its already iconic cutscenes, but it provides us with the tools and insight necessary so that we can go and create original sentences ourselves and use them in our own projects, which has me excited to see how others will apply this knowledge in their own works in the future. It's truly fascinating the level of depth the team's research has gone into this topic, showing in excruciating detail how complete the language really is, considering how little we get to see from it in the game. Which goes a long way to make the lore of the games feel more alive as a whole, and goes to show how much passion the community is willing to pour into uncovering all of its secrets, and share the love for the franchise along the way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and try to put some of this knowledge to use myself. Kino Atanigu Samus.